good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second session of the SEMA E2 syllabus, which is uh, managing performance. All right. Now, in this session, our focus is on the alternative approaches to business models. All right. Now, in our previous session, we looked at what business ecosystems are. And the primary issue around the business ecosystems understanding is the fact that businesses do not operate in a vacuum. You can never analyze an organization uh, in its independence, okay? Because the thought around business ecosystems is that businesses are dependent on other businesses and stakeholders, all right? That being said, it takes us to the concept of why businesses exist, right? So at the end of the day, businesses exist in order to give value, right, to its stakeholders. So it is important that we understand that an organization exists for the purpose of providing value, right, to its stakeholders, right? And therefore, central to the operations of the business is the value creation of an organization, right? So every business model that an organization develops or that organizations develop are there, right? Or is there to ensure that the organization provides value to the entity, to the entity and other stakeholders, okay? Right, after having realized that a business model, right, is there to ensure that the organization gives value to the organization and its stakeholders. The question would be, what is a business model? All right. So there is a definition by KPMG, right? And there is a definition by Magreta. I'm going to read those two definitions to you, one by KPMG and the other by Magreta, and then I will uh, explain, All right? KPMG reads, a business model is any description of, of the business model must include how the firm is structured, the markets in which it operates, how it engages with those markets, its main products and services, its main categories of customers, and its main distribution methods. This is what KPMG says. Margreta, on the other hand, says business models are also stories that explain how firms work, including how they make money and how they deliver value to customers at an appropriate cost. Okay, so if we look at these two different um, definitions, right, uh, on business models, it therefore comes to us clearly that a business model is how an entity intends to deliver value not only to itself, but to its stakeholders as well. All right, 
And therefore, a traditional business model, right, uh, stipulated by SEMA, starts with the definition of value. So at the middle, we have value, right? So SEMA says we must first be able to define value. What is value? Now, if you intend to define value, the first thing is you need to identify the organization's stakeholders. And you define value for each of the stakeholders because value to an investor is not value to the community. Are we together? So you need to be able to define value for each of the entity stakeholders, right? Once you are able to define value for each of the uh, stakeholders of the organization, then you need to ask yourself the second question, how do you create value for these stakeholders? Then you talk about the value creation process. All right, we're going to go deeper with this, but I just need you to get the thought at this present moment, right? Now, after you speak about the value creation, then you need to ask yourself, how do you deliver that value to the stakeholders, right? And after the delivery of value, sorry, uh, there's a bit of uh, a reflection here. Define, so value here. Then deliver value, right? And the last thing that you need to think of is value capturing. How does the organization then capture value? Because if you look at it here, right, the creation and the delivery of value is concerned with other stakeholders, which are not the organization. But as the organization itself, if you are giving a benefit to stakeholders, as an organization, you must remain with some form of value yourself, which then is the capturing of value by the organization. Right, so in the advent of defining value, an entity needs to carry out a stakeholder analysis in order to determine which stakeholders are of great importance to the organization, right? And as you determine which uh, stakeholders are important, you seek to define the value that each of these stakeholders requires. And in order to understand the stakeholders, you need to understand stakeholders in the context of their power and interest, All right? How interested a stakeholder is and how powerful a stakeholder is. Now, if we look at Mandelow's stakeholder analysis, all right, Mandelow speaks of the power and the interest of the stakeholder, right? And puts these stakeholders in quadrants, right? If a stakeholder has got a low interest and low power, 
you give minimum effort. You give minimum effort. Right? Um, if they have high power and low interest, right? You need to keep them satisfied. Because once they are not satisfied, all right, they move to have a high interest, right? Which means they become a key player or key stakeholder, all right? Those with high power and high interest are key stakeholders. And therefore, these ones with a high power and low interest, right? Uh, you need to keep them, sorry, uh, I think I might have made a mistake. Okay, these have got low power, but high interest, you keep them informed. So I didn't make a mistake, sorry. Keep informed, right? Now, an organization needs to analyze every decision, right? And in every decision, stakeholders uphold uh, a level of power and a level of interest which differs with every decision that the organization makes. Okay. So in other words, um, those organ those uh, stakeholders, which are key players, right, need to define the strategy of the organization. All right, and therefore, how to treat how to treat these stakeholders. Um, or how to deal with the stakeholders when you think of the concept of value, all right? There are certain decisions or stakeholder uh, needs that need to be urgent or to be treated urgently or with some level of agency, all right? And there are certain, uh, there are certain uh, decisions that are regarded as legitimate or uh, legitimate claims by the stakeholders. All right. So it would be important, right, uh, that an organization prioritizes, right, um, looking at these three circles, we can say the power is there, right? Agency and legitimacy, right? The higher the, the number imputed, right? That would be one there at the center, that this is, uh, also, uh, there is a, an organization has power, right? Uh, these are also agent and legitimate claims, right? So you prioritize these ones first, right? Then two would be here, power and agency, right? Three would be here, right? Power and legitimacy. Right, four would be here, right? Agency and legitimacy of the claims, right? Five would be agency and legitimacy, and six would be the powerful ones, right? So, what you need to understand is that you need to establish and identify the needs of the high priority stakeholders, 
right? And formulate, formulate value propositions to these stakeholders. Because once you are able to identify the stakeholder needs, right? Or to identify where the value according to these stakeholders is, then you propose uh, how you are going to provide value to these stakeholders. And that's what we call value propositions, right? You formulate value propositions that meet the needs of the highest priority stakeholder. So these numbers indicate prioritization. So the high priority stakeholders are those which, which have power with urgent needs and legitimate claims. They will be prioritized. So value creation is about uh, is about the stakeholders. You need to identify between short-term and long-term value to these stakeholders, right? Between financial and non-financial uh, needs or value to these stakeholders. Some require only financial, others prioritize both financial and non-financial value. You also need to identify between tangible and intangible value, right? So we are saying value can be defined in terms of period, right? Is it long-term or short-term? Value can be defined in terms of monetary, financial or non-financial, right? Then Durability, is it tangible or it's not tangible? And at the end of the day, what matters is value should be shared among stakeholders. So an organization that is a sustainable organization needs to develop what we call shared value. Now discovery will argue that we share value with you through our vitality, discovery vitality tool. So in the creation of value, value creation, these are the factors that you need to consider. You define value in terms of the period. You define value in terms of the monetary benefit or non-monetary benefit. You define value in terms of its durability and this value must be shared value then this will define this will define value for you and you'll be able to formulate the value proposition to the stakeholders from there you need to consider the five key elements that must connect and align in order for an organization to be able to create an appropriate value at an appropriate cost. So there are five key elements that will give an organization the ability to create that value. Let's look at these five key elements that an organization should consider in the creation of value.
All right. So an organization should have resources, right? It needs particular resources in order to be able to create value. It needs partners because we have an ecosystem. It needs processes. It needs to have processes to assist that organization to create value. There are activities that must be done in order for an organization to create value. And there is expected output that assists an organization in the creation of value. So these are the five key elements that an organization needs to consider in the creation of value. All right. Now, once these have been considered, in summary, the value creation process requires a consideration of elements, right? And it also needs a consideration of other factors, right? Of how you define value, which we have spoken about. Whether you consider the duration, you consider the financial aspect or non-financial aspect, you consider tangibles, and you consider the fact that it should be shared value. And this should be forward looking and not limited to the past. So an organization cannot define value while it's going back to what it has done. What an organization has done should only be a background of what the organization is going to do in order to define and create value for its stakeholders. Okay, the next thing that we need to look at is how an organization then delivers value because we have spoken about the definition of value. We have spoken about the creation of value. And now we speak about the delivery of value. So an organization should have channels to deliver that value, channels of distribution, right? Are you going to deliver value through online platforms? Are you going to deliver value, right? Through certain integrated channels. So firms deliver value through communication, distribution and sales channels, right? Including certain technological tools like phones. Now you can actually, uh, you can actually, um, what can I say? You can actually trade, do e-commerce while you're on the phone or on the laptop. Channels must be integrated, right? turning shopping into a seamless experience for the customer. It must not be difficult. There must be an easy way for an organization to actually deliver value to its clients or customers. Customers today expect the buying experience to be to be more relevant, personalized, and to reveal consistent features, All right? And it must be able to offer experience based on a customer's background.
a customer, including you guys watching this video, right, must feel that the service that is being provided is exactly or better than what they were looking for. It is aligned to the customer's expectations. That's how an organization has to deliver value uh, through these channels. Then there are also customer segments because not all customers are the same. So the issue of cost segmentation must be considered when delivering value to the customers. So an organization then needs to subdivide the homogeneous market to be to into several heterogeneous markets. That's what we call segmentation, mostly a marketing term. The organization must be able to identify or determine the profit uh, that can be derived from each of the segments. An organization may also use generic strategies to try and identify which segments it seeks to satisfy or does it seek to satisfy all the segments so an organization should also be willing to invest resources its activities its processes into these various segments in order to satisfy the customer. And it must be able to measure the performance of each of these segments to ensure that an organization is successful at the end of the journey. All right. Then lastly, an organization should be able to capture value. And in order to capture value, there are three things that an organization should think of. An organization's revenue model. If, if now you think of IPRIS 15 from your F2 syllabus, it speaks to this, the revenue model. If it's a financial institution, it may also speak to IPRIS Nine, I for seven, IAS 37. It must also think of its cost model. And it must also think of residual value. Residual value, which is what the entity gets after it all. Revenue minus costs give us profit. That's the residual value. And how is this residual value going to be shared? An organization can then think of corporate social responsibility before we even think of dividends. An organization can think of investing in a good corporate governance system before it even thinks of distributing dividends. Now, from a cost perspective, this is where we now speak of P2. An organization invests in activity-based costing to be able to efficiently estimate its cost behavior and understand the nature and behavior of the cost structure of the entity invest in activity-based management and all the associated things that are associated with IABM, cost reduction, eliminating non-efficient activities to ensure that the costs 
are reduced. And from a revenue expect perspective, an organization needs to be able to price, which speak of pricing decisions. Right? We speak of pricing decisions. Wow, how should an organization price its products? If it's a new product, should we use penetration pricing strategy? Should we use price skimming? Should we think of a competitor-based pricing strategy? Should we think of a cost-based pricing strategy? All these are aligned to the revenue model of the entity. Then the difference between the two gives us residual value. And how is this residual value going to be shared? Is there anything that we need to share with the government in order to entice them so that we can get favors when they create policies? They should think of us. It's not a bribe. It's called lobbying, right? And it's called influencing government opinions. Because you're not giving to the official, but you're contributing to the economy through formally acceptable channels, which will which will improve, which will result in the improvement in the structures of the, of the country or of the economy. Do we need to share anything with the community? Do we need to incentivize our executives so that they can make better decisions? Hmm. So this summarizes the SEMA business model, right? Which um, um, we need to see and, and identify. So the SEMA business model is what we can see now that is, I think this is a clearer picture here. Okay, right. You see that value is at the center of the business model, right? Now in orange is the value creation, oh sorry, the value definition, which then considers identifying of stakeholders, prioritization of stakeholders, identifying the needs of the stakeholders and formulating the value proposition. Then creation is in purple up there. It speaks of the resources, the partners, the processes, the activities and the outputs. Then the delivery of value, which is in green, speaks of segments and channels. But in these, in all these, you see the gray colors there speaks of markets, society, technology, risks and opportunities. These are what need to be considered constantly when we are looking at the concept of value and value creation. Then when we look at the capturing of value, speak of the cost model. We speak of the revenue model. So the cost model, we are going to cost accounting, cost and management accounting, right? Which is P2. The revenue model, we're going to F2, IFRS 15, and the other uh, 
uh, IFRSs as well. Then shared value or residual value, you see? So by this, it takes us to the end of this particular session after having understood the concept of value and value creation. All right. So in summary, we are saying that an organization exists to give value to its stakeholders. And there are a number of considerations that an organization needs to think of prior to uh, giving that value. Thank you.